Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. As I've mentioned uh, before and feel like I need to mention each time, I am presently retired from working on musical instruments, so I am not accepting any new instruments in the shop for repair or to build custom ones or anything. However, I'm still working on instruments for my friends and family and real good causes. So I have one here that's kind of meets two of those criteria. This is a request from a friend and it's for a real, real good cause. It's a fundraiser for the Six String Heroes, and this one's out of the Baldwin, Missouri area, the VFW Auxiliary and Epsilon Sigma Alpha Sigma Delta Chapter are sponsoring an April Showers fundraiser for Six String Heroes. Six String Heroes is a nonprofit organization that serves our veterans. It goes on to say that these Six String Heroes, you know, some of them have post-traumatic stress disorder, brain injuries, amputations, or other physical injuries. They provide lessons and things like that uh, for these uh, six string heroes and uh, looking for private donations and things. Well, I received this letter from my good friend, Gary Mertz. Uh, Gary and I were neighborhood kids together, uh, teenagers, if you will. Anyway, Gary knows that I'm into instruments and thought maybe I could help in this regard. Well, it just so happens I think I can. Here's a really fine guitar, probably worth three to four thousand dollars, maybe more. I don't know the exact model of this guitar. It's a Larravee. I'll let you see the peg head. It's dirty. It's got dust on it. It's been sitting around here for a while, but it's in like new condition for that part. Anyway, you can see the body here. It's got some fancy inlay around the sound hole, fancy inlay around the edge. Uh, it's a fine guitar. However, it's got two major problems. One of them is it's got a big crack through here and it's got a crack through here. How did I obtain this guitar? Well, one of my wonderful customers just said I could have it and I could do with it as I want. He uh, bought one of my custom guitars years ago and this has been sitting on the shelf. So what I'm planning to do is fix this guitar up and either donate it to the organization or maybe better auction it off on my own website and then donate all the proceeds to them, which I think would actually raise more money that way. That part will be decided later. Right now, we have to fix this thing so it's playable. Let's just get started. And of course, the first thing you do is you gotta take the strings off. These strings are very old and very tarnished, so I'm not gonna save them, of course. And then we just take a side cutter and cut the strings off. Much faster, saves a lot of time. I don't know how easy this will be to fix. In fact, I don't think it's gonna be easy. I think it's gonna be a tough fix. But I think it's doable and I should not be able to get it fixed in a couple of days here and get it back into, into service. And like I said, then we'll auction it off or do whatever we need to do. Okay, you can see there's a big crack right here and there's a big, uh, you know, big crack in this. So let me look inside and see if I see any obvious damage before I go any further. It's got a maple bridge plate and the bridge plate looks to be intact. As long as it's solid, I guess we're good. And as far as I can tell, we're solid. I don't see a crack in it. Looking at the braces behind it, I see where the crack through the top runs down through there. My guess is that this top just wasn't dry enough when they built the guitar and it has dried out since. And a lot of people will say it wasn't humidified. It probably has almost nothing to do with the humidity. It, it'll have to do with a couple of things. Like I said, it could be that the top wasn't dry enough. Uh, it could also be that there's real heavy tension in these round sides. These sides are pushing out if there's tension on them and that will pull this apart very easy. Or it could be a combination of those two things. But very likely it's something like that rather than just plain humidity. Just plain humidity doesn't necessarily cause a problem like this. Although a lot of people will swear it does. And that's fine, just keep swearing that it does because I've been doing this for 40 years and I don't see that kind of problem from humidity. 
we're going to get the heat out and see if we can pop this bridge off first thing. Got my homemade heater here. There is uh, plans and videos available to see how this was built. Actually, the plans are uh, on a side bender, but it's made exactly the same. The only difference is the termination point here. Anyway, you can find that on my website and there's a special tab for making a side bender or, or heater like this. So I turn it on, I have it set to 420 degrees and it'll take it a few minutes to get that hot, but it won't take long. We'll just give it a few minutes and we'll be right back with you. Well, due to the fact that I got sidetracked, this has been sitting on here quite a while, actually. Probably five or 10 minutes longer than I was ex anticipating. Looks like there's a pickup in here too. I wish I had noticed that before, or maybe it's not a pickup, maybe it's just a, yeah, it was just a shim. Uh, I'm glad that wasn't a pickup, because that would have been bad. Looks like there's more shims down in there too. Yeah, I don't feel any pickups. I don't think there's any electric on this. So, yeah, it just fooled me what it, when it looked like a pickup, but it wasn't. Well, it's uh, as hot as it is, it still ain't hot enough. As hot as that is, you'd think that would come off of there pretty easy, because it's really hot. They may have used some unique kind of glue, something like an epoxy or something, who knows, but that should have been plenty hot to remove this. Wow, very hard. Yeah, I don't think that's just your standard wood glue. Yeah, it's really hard. Pushing really hard. I'm afraid when I'm pushing this hard, I'm afraid they're gonna pop loose and stab myself in the arm or something. Well, it's coming. I don't know how well it's coming. I don't like to have to go in from this side, but I think I have to on this case because I think something's it's probably doing some tear out or something. There it is. Hopefully I didn't scratch it too bad. Yeah, it, whatever kind of glue they used, it wasn't affected by the heat. That's so hot I can barely hold it. I mean, it's really hot. And you can see the glue never turned loose. I basically peeled it off there through the wood. But that's okay, we'll be fine. I'm not worried about that, we'll fix all that. But we got the piece of junk bridge that was broke off. Now I'm gonna see about uh, maybe fixing this area here first. Well, my friends, I'm 99% sure that closing this crack will be next to impossible. I think instead it's gonna to have to be filled. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, try to close it with this clamp. And you know, like I said, I don't think that's gonna work, but I'm gonna just try it, because you never know till you try. I've got leather in there to protect this. I don't wanna to go too hard too fast. It doesn't look like it's moving. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it. I don't think that's a good way to try to do this. If I could get right across the center of the crack, we might make something. But here, I, you know, the only place I can clamp it is up here at the big wide area. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So I'm gonna cut my losses on that idea because I don't think that's gonna work. I didn't think it would work before I started, but it's always worth a try, you never know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a sliver of wood and put it in here. That's the only option you've got really. It's just gonna break if you, tr if I did get it closed, the odds are it would break again anyway because it's uh, got pressure on it, pushing it apart. It's kind of chilly in here, so the furnace is running. You'll have to excuse the sound. I've got a piece of you know high quality spruce. I'm looking at how I could make this fit. So I guess the first thing to do is cut it off to length. I have it uh, turned the cr proper way also. This is, uh, the grain is running the same way the grain is running in this top. It's gonna be a trick to make this work. 
it's got, you know, it has to be thicker through here, of course, than on the ends. The ends thin out. I think first thing I'll do is run it through the uh, bandsaw and thin this down as thin as I can. Then we'll probably go through the thickness sander and then we'll get to, you know, actually planing the very ends to make them fit in there. Well, let's see how it goes through the bandsaw here. Well, that's pretty thin. Let's go see how much thinner it needs to be over at the guitar. Well, it almost goes down in there in a place or two. I'm going to need to take some more off of it. Just for grins, let's just see how thick it is right now. It's at 43 and a half thousandths right now. I don't really have a good way to measure the thickness of this crack. I don't know. It's really hard to measure. 27 that time. All I know is this isn't going in there, so it's not as big as it seems to be. I'm going to go run this through the thickness sander just a little bit more. I'm not going to film it. Well, I ran it through the thickness sander. Two more very light passes. Let's see if it goes in there now. I'm going to get my close-up glasses on to give a better look at this. No, not really. It looks huge, but it's not that big. Yeah, I'm going to run it through a couple more passes, and we'll see where we end up here. All right, we're down to 28 thousandths. 28.5, 0 0.0285 is really what it amounts to. I mean, I could probably force this. Before I go any thinner, I guess I'm gonna thin out the ends. I'm gonna just kind of mark it on here that really from here to about here, it needs to be thin. So I'll just kind of mark it out. This end, it's a lot less. I guess I'll take this little tiny finger plane and work it off right here. Worked it off pretty fast. I could probably scrape it though. Now I think about it, that would probably work pretty good. Let me try that. That cuts it pretty fast. It's a little bit scary cutting it with that thing. I think I'm gonna have to run it through the thickness sander some more yet. It's getting tiny. Well, I'm down to 26 and a half thousandths. I think I'm gonna go one more time through the thickness sander. Okay, now we're gonna get down to the brass tacks here. I think the uh, overall piece is thin enough now. I really have to work on the ends to get the ends to go in there. That may not be that easy. That's, this is working pretty good. This scraping thing is definitely the way to go here, I think. Really paper thin down there. Tell you, the fine part of the crack is really fine try this uh, scalpel. You know, I think the finish is hanging out over the crack. I'm on that teetering edge between perfection and a mess. I think I'm going to have to cut it off right there and thin this end out again. debating on what to do here. I'm afraid if I get it in there, then I won't be able to glue it. Other than maybe CA glue, and I don't really want to use CA glue. I'd prefer to use tight bond. I think it's going to work really nice when it's done. It's actually going to fill it and look pretty good, I think. I think I still got to thin this in down some more yet. I don't know if I'm ready to go for this or not. I have a feeling the tight bond's gonna make it harder to get this down in there. You would think it would make it like a lubricant, but I think it's gonna do the opposite effect. I think it's gonna make it harder to get it in there. Plus, I can't see it now. 
just go down in there a little more. Trying to think of what I could use to tap it down in there. Doesn't want to cooperate on this last little bit. I'm in good all the way up to about here, and then it's not quite so good. All right, well, we'll give that about an hour. I'm gonna get some water and clean this up, but I think that's actually gonna work pretty well. I think that's gonna actually look pretty good overall when we're done. Kind of surprised, but I think it'll work. Okay, this has been drying pretty close to an hour. I think I'm gonna try trimming this down. I'm gonna start with this little finger plane. I'm pretty good with the finger plane, and this is quite high above this, so when I get close, I'll stop. I won't trim it right down to the surface, of course. Seems like this wants to be carved from this other direction, so I'm gonna try that. Really close now. Almost level with the surface. I got this cut down pretty far. I even scraped a little bit off camera. And I've got some 220 sandpaper wrapped around the end of this stick. And I don't know if this will be a good idea or not, but I don't really know what else to try. The positive of using this sandpaper in this method is that I keep the sanding mark to a pretty much of a minimum at least. It is still scratching the surface a little bit, but not too much I can do about that. I just want to get it where it feels totally flush first, and then we'll go to the next step. That's not too bad. Now, I can feel it a little bit still. You know, you always want better. No matter how good you get something like this, you always want it a little better. I'm exaggerating, but the finish had done this at this crack. It had gone up like that. You know, even though the, the wood is absolutely level with the finish, there's still kind of a hump there because the finish itself has actually buckled up a little. It's not too bad. I can still feel it and it's still a little humped, especially right in here. Let's go down to finer sandpaper. We'll go to a 600. So that was 220. Now we're at 600. The inscription chiseled deep in stone. He fought back the tears as he read it. That feels better already. Let's go across that again with some fresh spot of 600 here. Not too bad, not too bad. Still a little bit of a hump. It's not quite like what I was hoping it would be. Go over it a couple more times with this 600 to smooth out any of those scratches from the 220. It felt better that time. We'll go across it again. Maybe it'll get a little better each time. All right, I think I'll go to another grade. I'll go to a 1200 or something like that, and we'll try that. Okay, I got a piece of 1200, and I think 1200 is going to help a lot. Visions of this brave man move slowly through his mind. He knew he was a hero. Yeah, that's feeling better. It's still a little bit humpy. I gotta be honest. It's not quite as nice as I wish it was, but you know, you can only do what you can do. You can't change some things. All 
Well, the 1200 is making it a lot more translucent where you can see through the scratches. That's better. And then I've got a 2000 yet. Hopefully that'll help that a lot. They told of his courage, honor and iron The only thing could stop him were those big guns on him. All right, we're going to try the uh, 2000 now. Each one gets a little nicer. That's the 2000. You can still see it, of course, but that's okay. Still hoping to get rid of a little bit of this humpy feeling. There's just a humpy feeling. Like I said, it kind of did this. The wood is down. You can't feel the wood at all. There's just a larger hump in that area, which I wish wasn't there at all, but I don't know what to do about that. I'm going to take the 2000 now with my fingers and spread this out a little bit more. Yeah, it's looking pretty fine. All right, I think I'm going to stop there for that for right now because that, that actually is not terrible. It's, it's pretty good. I just, you know, you just want it better. Always want it better. I have some amber shellac and I'm trying to just lightly as possible put it right on the wood and not get it on anything else. Many young men died on that fateful day. Many young men cried for the pain to go away. You can see that it matches better at the top than it does at the bottom. And you know, you got to remember there's a lot of stuff there that hasn't been buffed out yet. No matter how good it is, though, you always want it a little better. Our world is a better place for the sacrifice the game. That's why on June the 7th, his son visits his grave. It still shows up quite a bit right now. We'll give that about 30 minutes to dry. It doesn't take very long for shellac to dry. While this shellac is setting up on the guitar and drying out, I'm going to work on making the new bridge. You know, there's just no way to fix this bridge. It's, I mean, you could try to fix it, but it would be kind of silly. So we'll just make a new one. I'm going to use a substitute wood. I don't feel like I'm uh, going down in quality. This is a very high quality piece of wood. You can hear how hard it is. Very hard piece of wood. It's a piece of uh, what I think is purple heart. It's very tight grain. It's just a different color. What I can do is I can dye it black after we're done and you'll never know the difference. It's super hard wood. It's going to be a super tone wood. I mean you can just tell. Just I'm barely tapping that and you can tell what it's like. Very hard, very, very solid wood. In fact, you can't get anything out of this compared comparatively. Of course, this is a bigger piece of wood. It's going to make a better sound, but, but it's a very high quality piece of wood. So there's no compromise in terms of quality. Just the uh, color is the only problem. And like I said, we can dye it black and I don't think that'll be an issue at all. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, mark this up. I'm going to make it just a hair bigger all the way around. And I think that's a good idea because you want to cover up this blemish. And I would like to uh, cut around this anyway. I'm not real happy with the way the bridge came off. Like I said, this was some kind of glue that does not come off with heat. I don't know what kind of glue it is, but it definitely didn't care about the heat at all. Okay, so I'm leaving not quite a sixteenth of an inch on the front here and about the same on this on my left end here. Then I'm going to draw a pencil mark that uh, will work pretty good here and we'll leave the pencil mark and I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. I'm holding it so that the pencil is slightly away from the back and that way we've got a bridge that's a little bit oversized but not ridiculous oversized. First thing I'll do is I'll cut this out and then we'll thin it down to approximate thickness of this because this is much thicker. But this is a real good piece of wood. It's, in fact, you can't even see the grain in it. It's so 
so tight the grain is. It's just wonderful. Great piece of wood. Okay, so now we're going to cut out this bridge. I'm going to put on the close-up glasses because I want to do a real nice job trimming this. Well, I think you can see that I left the pencil mark all the way around. And, you know, I left a little space on this end and a little space on the front end, so we're definitely oversized. The next thing I'm going to do is set the thickness and, and trim the thickness for this. This has a lot of wood on the back of it, so, you know, I've got that fairly snug, but it's still going to come out thicker than we need. Well, there you go. I think it can't be done much better than that. I would say we're close eh, between a sixteenth and an eighth inch taller overall, so that's about right. I'm going to go clean this up on the spindle sander. I'm not going to bother filming that, and then we're going to thin this thing down to make it look like this. Okay, what I'm going to try to do is attach this bridge to this one, and I'm just going to try to do it with just tape. I have a uh, transfer punch is what I'm planning to use and these transfer punches are really good in that they fit the hole perfectly. I could use this as the template to drill with and I, I might even do that in addition but this little mark helps the bit follow the hole better. Might just try drilling it with it on there. I think the little dimples will help the drill bit follow that better. It's pretty solid. It isn't going to move very easily. But I think I'll go ahead and get the holes drilled before I do all the thickness sanding and all that. It's just easier while it's good and flat. And everything's simple to, to work on. Okay, I'm about ready to drill these holes. I've got it set up with a 7 seconds inch drill bit, which seems to match the holes exactly. <laughs> That looks really good. They're all perfectly lined up. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next step in the process is to thin this down to 375 thousandths, which is just about what the other one is. We're pretty thick, I think. Yeah, we're at 408, so we got 33 thousandths to come off, something like that. I've got the vacuum on for this, and here we go. Well, if you got the right tool, that don't take long. There's 376 thousandths. That's only one thousandth thicker than what I said. So a thousandth of an inch isn't very much. Okay, now we're going to knock off these ends. And I've kind of put some temporary marks here about where they need, where we need to go at an angle. I'm hoping it'll work. We'll see how it goes. And for the pain to go away. Sacrifice the game. That's why on June the seventh, his son visits his grave in a little village graveyard. He was standing. All right, I'm going to check the ends here to make sure I'm not getting too thin. I'm at 150 thousandths right now, which I think is pretty close. But I'm going to double check with the other one. 
Well, I'm glad I stopped right there because the other one's 144, this one's 150, and I wanted to leave this one a little bit heavier. That's not very much, but it's heavier, and that's good. Just, you know, anything to strengthen it a little bit. Well, if the video footage turned out, you saw me making this bridge. It's not finished yet. There's, it's squared off here, so we got some work to do, some hand work, and that's okay. Not a problem. I could do it on the sander, and I might go back to the sander to do it. I never know how I'm going to do these things till I start. Sometimes it works better with the hand tools. Sometimes it works better with the power tools. It just depends how the wood's carving. Oh, that's not too bad so far. A little tearing out going that way, so I have to go this way. I'm rounding this off to kind of match the back edge of this, and you notice how this kind of curves around like that. Well, I'm doing that same thing on this, it's just taking me a little bit of time, but that's starting to curve around a little bit, and it's just all done by hand here carving. Now that I got the bulk off of it, I think I'll go over to the sander and just kind of clean it up with the sander. I think that's going to be just fine. Okay, that made it look real nice. Now what I'm going to do is take a uh, curved file and just kind of round off the, the corners on the edges of this so that it doesn't have any sharp edges. I can't show you in the video, but like that feels really sharp on that side because I haven't ground it yet. But once you uh, file it like this, then it feels really smooth and, and kind of round, feels nice to the touch. Now I'll just take some 220 and clean up the uh, sanding marks from the sander. As he read the inscription chiseled deep in stone. The sanding marks on this end grain, and right here this is what you call end grain because it's going up the hill and it's it's going right into the end of the uh, board really. Even though it's you know in the middle of this board, it's still end grain. And that's much harder to sand. So I'm working that a little extra to get rid of this heavy sanding marks. My sweet blowing of the mountain, I recall, I recall. Yeah, it's really turning out nice. Almost looks like a professional made this. The day I met her on the mountain in the fall. There's a close up of it. It looks really smooth and really nice. Just about as good as it can be. It looks as identical to that bridge as you can get one to look, I think. With the exception I haven't beveled the holes yet. So I'm gonna go do that right now. Well, I got that done. I'm not crazy about those countersinks. They're a little chattered because those bits, I, every one of them I've ever used, they all chatter and I just don't like them. I'll figure something out and maybe smooth that out a little more. But right now I'm gonna go back to this because this is uh, dry and I'm going to see about uh, sanding that again. I got a little more of that 2000 on here. I'm afraid this is just gonna sand the color right off is what I think it's gonna do. That's kind of what it's doing. Shellac doesn't sand very good. It always sticks to your sandpaper. So it's coating up the sandpaper. It never does as good as you want. The problem is that the shellac darkened the seams on both sides of the wood. The wood itself was about the right color, but the seams on both sides got darker. 
which is just kind of typical luck you have with this kind of stuff. If those seams hadn't gotten darker, I think it could have been a dang near invisible repair. Well, it's back to white again, which I figured was going to happen. Our love grew, the summer long. Little did I know. My... Yeah, it's back to white again. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But I can still feel a hump. I wish that hump would just go away, but it just won't cooperate, unfortunately. Going this way, you can't feel it at all. Going this way, there's a hump because, like I said, this had curled up. It's got nothing to do with the piece of wood that's in there. It's got to do with the way the top reacted after it split. Try the shellac one more time. My sweet Melinda the mountain I recall I recall It's not terrible, it just ain't good. Just wish it was better. Wasn't for the dark line, it would have looked really fine. Yet another day is dawned. I've let this uh, shellac, and I put a little bit of other finish on top of this, and I've let it uh, cure overnight. I've got 2,000 sandpaper here, just trying to work it out best I can. Kind of mentioned in my vlog that it's next to impossible to repair a light finish. It's just next to impossible. Now, I mean, if you took the whole thing and completely off and put it back on, you could do pretty good. But to try to patch it, it's pretty difficult. If it's dark, it's not that hard, because dark, you can, you know, you just make it dark and it, it works. But uh, light like this, yeah, it's really hard to do it. In this particular case, the glue joints turn dark, and that's what you're seeing. If the glue joints didn't turn dark, it, this would be a very good repair. But it is what it is. I'm trying to make it where you don't feel it so much. It's you can still feel it. It's like I said, the finish kind of came up and did this, and I've got most of that out, but there's still some of that there too. The day. sanding through in places, I can tell that. It's like chasing your tail. You can never get caught up, it don't seem like. I'll probably regret it, but I'm gonna go ahead and try buffing it with a little bit of the semi-chrome here. That's still a little dull right there. That improved it some. It ain't great, but it improved it some. If Again, there's a high spot right here. This is actually high through here. The whole thing is a little bit high. That's unfortunate too. If it could have just been flat, that would help the looks a lot also. By her graveside in the valley Listening to the lonesome crickets call. 
I'm gonna give up on that for now. Maybe come back to that later. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this bridge in place, clamp it in place, trace around it, get the finish removed. That looks pretty darn good right there. Anyway, I'll get a clamp and clamp that down and then we'll trace around it. Well, I've got the, uh, a little call in there and I've clamped this down as tight as I can get it. It looks like it's all lined up with the holes. I'm gonna take this sharp scalpel and trace around this. Got to be very careful and try to just, you know, make sure I stay right against the uh, bridge. Just take my time, do it lightly. Especially the first time, do it very lightly. Then you go back over it a couple times. I think this has a very hard finish. It's, a, it's one of the more modern finishes. I don't know what kind of finish it is, but it's, it's definitely not just like a nitrocellulose lacquer. I would call it an epoxy type finish. Definitely a more modern finish. That's why I'm scribing it so many times because this is a very hard finish and I'm not getting through it, I can tell. It's a, like a, almost like a fiberglass type finish, but it's epoxy. I can smell it as I, as I do this. I can smell that it's some sort of an epoxy or something. I like to work from one direction, but on the other hand, I can't quite get there if I put that around, so I have to do it this way. Can't help. When you get to the end like that, you gotta really let up on the pressure so you don't go pulling past the end of the bridge. Well, that's about as good as I can do, I think. Let's see if we've got it marked pretty well. I think we do. The call's sticking up in there because I had some two-way tape on it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's pretty symmetrical, pretty even. And I'm glad we're out past this. There's quite a bit of damage in here and we're gonna try to smooth all that out and make a real good connection. See if the call will come back out. Yep, it will. Still not entirely sure how I'm gonna approach this one. This is a thick, heavy finish. I'll probably use my tool that I always use. This is just a finger plane blade that I just stuck in a piece of aluminum. Nothing fancy about it. I just put it on a little bit of an angle. I ground off some of this on the bottom. This neural part has no bearing on anything. I like to use this rather than a chisel because it's got a round bottom here and I can kind of rock it. It's, it's, it's nice for doing little detail work like this. And I'm trying to break this out without going past my line. So far, so good. The line looks like it was just about the right depth. I recall. I just want to show it to you so you can tell I didn't do this, but they had cut a line here already. And a lot of, because that glue didn't separate, a lot of the wood pulled out inside the line that they had cut. Why they cut the line, I'm not 100% sure. I guess that was their finish line or whatever. The bridge was glued to the outside of the finish probably, I don't know. You know, anyway, it, yeah, you can probably tell that that much of it overlapped the finish. It's unfortunate that there was, it caused a lot of tear out that way because that bridge did not release from the top. I mean, it did not. That glue, whatever they're using, some, I'm pretty sure it's some kind of an epoxy type based glue, modern type stuff, which is, is fine if, if you don't ever have to take it apart. But man, when you have to take it apart, like this one, because the bridge was broken, then you're up against it. I'm going to cut through that some more because it doesn't seem to be cracking like it should. What 
I'll do is come back and level all this wood inside there and try to clean it, level it out as best I can before I glue it back together. on that end, doggone it. I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. You can smell for sure that it's some kind of epoxy. It's definitely got a different smell than most finishes. I mean, the more modern guitars, most of them have this kind of finish. I've worked on a few of these but uh, with this type of finish, but I don't know anything really about it. I'm no expert on this kind of finish. You heard a song about a horse or two. Well, here's one more and I swear it's true. The finest horse you've ever seen. His name was Phantom 614. There we go. Now it's picking up off there. That's good. That's what I want. When it comes off more like that, that's much better. A brown young stallion with head held high. His cold light satin under candlelight. His mane and tail old Yeah, the whole end piece came off. That's that's the way I like to see it. If it comes off like that, it's a lot better, a lot easier. Or if it chips easy, either way, I'm good with it chipping too, as long as it chips. But when it just bends and doesn't come loose, that's not good. His name was Phantom 614. Like tracing that line freehand, if you turn this thing just the least little bit, it'll turn off and pull out or pull off. It's the pucker factor again. You got to be careful as you're doing this. I want a complete wood to wood connection. I don't want any finish in between my bridge and this top. That's the way they really all should be, but typically that's not the way the factories do it. And I know why they do it the way they do it. It's, they couldn't afford to do it this way. It would take too much time, too much effort, too much uh, chance for a uh, screw up and uh, causing problems, uh, I can under, I totally get it. I'm not picking on them. There's no way they would pay somebody to do what I'm doing here as long as this takes to do it, you know. It would take a long time to develop the skill to do it without tearing everything up. It's not to say that I'm gonna be perfect on this, but I think I'll be fine, but you never know. I mean, I can slip, and if I slip, it's a mess. I hate to trace this, but I, I don't have many other options. I just don't know what it is. It's probably some resin based type glue, two part type glue, I would imagine. All right, I've just got this in to go, and I think we're finished with peeling off finish. Though just a young man at the time, I knew that one day he'd be mine, and I would ride there like a king up on the back of 614. One more little corner piece, and we're done. Come on, don't give me no trouble on this. I think we got it. That's all of the finish. It's removed. Now I need to go through and try to level it up. Like I said, where they cut that line, it tore out quite a bit more. So I don't know what to do with all that now. I guess I'm just gonna try to blend it as best I can. This heavy glue that's on here, I gotta get rid of that too. That glue is kind of spotty. I noticed that on the bridge. It, you know, it's not what I call my 100% coverage rule. You want to make sure you get 100% coverage. It's not my favorite one I've done, I can tell you that.
But I think it'll be fine. What's really weird is where it looks like I tore out, there's glue down in that Terra. So maybe it wasn't Terra. Maybe they did something unusual. I, I Yeah, because I, there's glue down in that low spot. I don't see how it did what it did. They, they had to do something. And, and obviously they did with this cutout that goes all the way around here. They obviously did something unusual. Maybe normal for them, but not normal for me. And it's really... Uh, making this more difficult for me. I, I really want this all one flat plane. You get a much better, much stronger glue job whenever it's all in one perfect plane and there's no air gaps. I've gone to a chisel as you can tell and the reason is because I'm actually chiseling the wood. I'm actually cutting the glue and this higher layer of wood off, it's all got to be one layer, you know, I can't have a step here like they have. I think I'll sharpen this chisel up some more. It's pretty sharp, but I'm going to make it really sharp because it just makes it easier to do what I'm doing. I like to hollow grind the end of my blade. It makes it come out very sharp and of course the Opponents to that idea is that it makes the th front edge too thin, but for the kind of work I do, that's exactly what you want. Now, if you were using a hammer with a chisel, that's a different thing, but I don't use hammers with chisels. This could almost use a new grinding, you know, for the hollow grind, because it's kind of wore off, but I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it one more time as it is, I think, partly to just save time. The trainer said, son, he can't be rode. Stay away, boy, or you'll be thrown. The idea is to scare the wood and the finish so bad by the sharpness of this that it just pops off on its own. A lot of this glue residue is left over. That's that stuff's hard too. It's harder to chisel. I don't know what to do about that. I'm, I've never seen anything quite like this. It, like I said, you can see how this area inside their cut mark is little lower than, this, than their cut mark around the outside edge. And I don't know why that is. You can see the glue down in that low spot. Well, I don't want the glue there and I don't really want a low spot there. I want to have it all one level. And I'm not sure what to do about that. I'm basically chopping off their ledge is for the most part what I'm doing. I honestly don't know any other option. <laughs> that glue is hard stuff. They said was me. His name was Phantom 614. A one-man horse to me grew true. The people would stare as we ride through. I sighed with it's possible that somebody else worked on this and did some of this. I don't know. I don't know if this was done from the factory or if this was a different repair or something later. I kind of think it might have been another repair because I kind of think I remember him saying something about he. Well, in fact, this had a repair tag on it when it came here. Still got the repair tag up on the inside here, by the way. I might as well pull it off and show it to you. This was the return authorization number here. Well, there you go. That's what was covering up the uh, serial number. Still can't see it very well, though. It's got a 10 at the top, and then it's got a 23617. The 10, I guess, is the model number. I think it's a J10, maybe, is what I'm thinking. And then the serial number is 23617. I'll be sure to look that up later. Well, as I was working on this, Jim Sutton from the St. Louis area called and was telling me that it is a J10. Well, as you saw just 
moments ago I pulled that tape out of there and found out that it was a 10 and I think I said on camera that I think it's a J10. It doesn't say J in there, it just says 10. But anyway, uh, I think we got it confirmed now thanks to uh, Jim Sutton. So thank you, Jim. Yeah, this is some really, really hard glue here. When I do this, I only want to do this one time and I want it to be right. Having that glue in there is not a good thing. I'm trying not to carve out any more than I have to, but I got to get that glue out of there. After seeing this, I don't really think my tear out was very bad on what I did. I think it was all pretty good, it, in fact. Like I said, it may have been somebody's repair. I really don't know. But they sure have got it made a kind of a, kind of a mess out of this, in my opinion. It's, it's not the way I would do it. But we'll get it, we'll get it pretty close to the way I would do it here before we glue this back on. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to be 100% like I would like it, but we'll get it pretty close. I don't think it'll be any further trouble. Before I glue this on, I'm going to really inspect the inside of this guitar better too. You know, with this crack here and stuff, there could be a loose brace or a place where the brace is loose and I'd like to get that fixed too. Right here where that glue is down deep, I'll try to give you an idea how deep it is. Uh, let me see if I can do it with my calipers here. Maybe I can. Yeah, you're like 50,000 deep right there. That's crazy. Let me check it again, make sure I didn't mess it up. Yeah, 50, 56 it says, 53 the first time. So it's got to be pretty close to that. Let me check it right here. This is a little less, I think. Well, actually it says more. Yeah, it's, uh, that's not a good thing. I don't like it at all. And it's not very even either. It's like deeper over here than it is over here. It's not near that deep over here. So what do you do with something like that, you know? You just do the best you can. That's all you can do. A lot of glue right in here too. Just a whole lot of glue. You can probably see the yellow color. It feels a little better, but it still ain't exactly like I want it. I just want to see now if it's if this will fit in the spot where it goes, if it'll fit down in there. And I think it does. Yeah, you can see it. It fits in there really nice. Just, and I don't see a crack around it anywhere. I actually think that's pretty good. It's better than I was expecting. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more leveling. Find it, for it's not on any maps I know. Out across the field, through the pasture. Climb along a steep and rocky trail. When you cross that little creek in the valley. I might be happy with that. All right, I'm going to look inside it really good now. I think, I'll think about this some more, but I think... I think I'm pretty good with that. I, I feel a high spot right there. You see that vine covered church on the hill. That vine covered church above the valley. Where the congregation. That's pretty darn good, huh? I'm pretty happy with that considering where we started. All right, moving inside. I'm going to look at this really good because I just want to make sure I don't see a loose spot there. Okay, I'm going to give it one more test before I uh, put the bridge back on it. This is my tap test. I think there might be something loose.
Oddly enough, it sounds like it's over here more than right here where the brake was. The brake sounds okay. Something right there in this general area, I think. Maybe. Let me go into the back because it might be on the back. Let me look on the back. I didn't really look at the back much yet. Aha, uh -huh, I do see light. Yep, that brace is loose. I see it now. I could hear it. Yeah, you can pretty much tell when you do this very much. Yeah, there's definitely a brace loose in there. Aha, uh -huh, I see another brace loose. So the two braces on the back, right through here and right through here, right where I heard the sound, that's where we got a problem. So I'm gonna get those glued in. You know, it's never easy. It's, you know, you think, well, just pour glue in there. You know, well, it ain't that easy to get glue in there. <laughs> you know, it's down in there and you don't wanna make a sloppy mess of it. Take a tiny wedge. I'm gonna go sharpen a couple of these wedges. Oh, and that one there might be sharp enough. I like to sharpen them and get them really sharp before I slide them in a place like this. Yep, it's going under there. Definitely. I got quite a bit of room under there. I think I can get the paintbrush in there with some tight bond. I have the front one wedged up, but I'm gonna to go to the back one and see if I can wedge it up first because it'd be easier to, to work from the back to the front. Yep, it's under there. Let's see if I can see my wedge in there. Yep. Aha, the third one back there is loose too. Yep, even the third one, I can see it now. I didn't see it before, but I see it now. Well, we're gonna have to fix that too. My goodness, I can barely get my arm back there to the third one. Guess I'll try to wedge the third one first. Can I get my arm back there? Yep, yep, and it's going up. I can feel it. Can I see it? Yep, definitely. Wow, <laughs> what a bummer. Well, that's what happens when you do the tap test. You learn things. Always do it with the fleshy part of your finger, never with your fingernail. Well, my friends, in order to get glue way back in there where I need to get it to work on these braces, I made a self a little extension stick, drilled a hole in the end of it that fits this fairly tightly. We'll use my friendly CA glue to uh, hopefully stick this down in there. Take the accelerator and spray it here. That seems to be solid enough. It's got a little bit of a curve to it too, which might be helpful going back under there. <laughs> so it's not perfectly straight, but I think that actually could be helpful reaching back in there to get into that crack. Shall see what we shall see is when we will see it, we'll see that or something along those lines. I think what I'm gonna do is pour a little bit of tight bond in this little pan here. Trying to see back in here is three-fourths of the problem. Well, I looked everywhere for all the different lights that people have given me, and uh, I know I've got them, but I can't find them. So, any port in the storm, so uh, this light band, headband uh, will be just fine for this purpose. In fact, it might be the best thing. It really lights it up in there. I know you can't see a thing I'm doing. Neither can I, so don't feel bad. My mom would say, don't feel like the Lone Ranger, because... I can't see anything either. That brush isn't really as stiff as I thought it might be. It's not getting under there as well as I would like for it to get under there. I'm gonna move the wedge over so I can get glue where the wedge is. Not easy, not easy. It's, I can barely reach it. Well, let's take the wedge out and see if we see anything squeezing out of there. Can I get to the wedge to get it out? Oh man, that's hard to do. Hurts my arm. Wow. That was really putting some strain right there on my arm. Let's see if I can push down on that brace now. 
and see if I see anything squeezing out. It's not that easy to see, I can tell you that. Got to find a little wedge that I can stick up in there and stand it up. Not sure how long it needs to be. I'll start with this, something like this. Eh, that's not tall enough. I would say it's not tall enough by the width of my finger, so it needs something longer than that. This looks pretty close. I can barely reach it, and yet that's not tall enough either. That's not quite long enough either, so I gotta get me a piece of wood that I can fit in there. Well, this piece is probably too long, but maybe it'll work. Oh my gosh, that's so far back there. It's just next to impossible to get to. I can just reach it with the tips of my fingers. Trying to control the stick back there, it's just not easy. I've got it in there, but I don't know if it's doing anything. I'm going to need a longer stick, and I'm going to have to find a way to get back in. See if we can do it with this. Maybe I can see what I'm doing if I get down here. Ah, oh, boy, not, not likely. Not likely to let me get through the sound hole, and no, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. So it's either do it by hand or probably not do it at all. And not, not do it at all might be the answer on this one. Unfortunately, boy, that's hard to get to. I don't have any tool that I know of that I can reach this with. There we go, I got it somehow. I don't know how I did it. Got lucky, and I think I actually do see a little bit of squeeze out coming out of there. And of course the light will not turn the right way. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. That's pretty good for where we were and what I thought I was going to get. That's pretty good. Get a wet towel and get in there and clean up the mess. I'm going to work from the back forward, so I've got to clean this up first. Now it's off. Guess the battery's going dead, which would be normal for my luck. Well, I found yet another flashlight, but it also says USB, so who knows if it's going to work either. Yeah, I think I cleaned that up good enough, so that's all I wanted to see. This one here is much closer. Still back in there a ways. I'm going to put a little water on the brush now to in a while, clean the brush off. And we'll try brace number two here, but got to get a wedge in there first. Together the brace. Forest, now stands as a for the grave. All right, pull the wedge out and let's put a stick on top of it and see if it does anything. I don't know if this one's long enough or not. Probably not, since it didn't seem to work on the other one. But I can get to this one better. I think maybe I can do a better job. Yep, this one's working. This light's not very bright. It's going dimmer and dimmer as we try. Yeah, so I guess it's out of juice too. Well, I found yet a better light. I hope it works. It's got, it takes actual batteries, so at least maybe if it goes out, I got something I can put in its place. That looks pretty good. It's not great, but it looks pretty good. So I think might be okay there. I'll use my towel to clean up the mess. Uh, knock the brace out. That's what I was afraid of. <sighs> Nothing's ever simple. Okay, we got one more and it's real close here, so it'll it won't be as hard. The siding and shingles are tattered. The steeple leans slightly to the right And though all the windows are shattered I think that's got that. I wasn't planning on doing three braces, but I'm glad we got it done. I think it'll be fine. 
And if I'll test those later, and if I don't think they're good enough, then I'll get some CA glue in there and, and clamp them the rest of the way. But of course, I'll have to wait till the other glue cures really well before I do that. Now, I think we're just gonna go ahead and get this baby put in place and clamp down. See, the good thing about the way I did that, at least I don't have to worry about this sliding around. It's not going anywhere, that much I know for sure. All right, let's get the glue on this. You notice how I'm going back and forth and I'm trying to work out any air bubbles, any air pockets. I want 100% coverage. Air pockets don't do you any good. If you work it down into the grain of the wood like this, you're way better off. I can take glue off of this and put it on here. It doesn't hurt as long as you, you got this covered good. Um, you don't need very much glue. In fact, you don't even really want very much glue. You want the minimum amount of glue, but 100% coverage. That's your best form formula. And there went my uh, block on the inside. Wouldn't you know, it wouldn't hold on long enough to let me get this finished. But that block on the inside, uh, I'm gonna probably need to put that back. Doggone it, if it would have just held another minute, we've been fine. I think we got 100% coverage there too. Now I gotta lay this down and get that block back in place. Still hear them singing the brothers and sisters who worship gather in that holy place still, though they lie at rest in the valley beneath that vine covered church. Look up in there just to make sure that call is roughly in the right place. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Now I'll slightly tighten these up just to where they get snug. Not tight. I don't want them tight. I just want them snug. And then I'll tighten it down with this. Maybe. If I can get it in there. If you tighten these down, you can warp your top. You don't want them tight. You just want them snug. And some people would say you don't need three of these, one's enough. And I say, fine, do it that way. As tight as I can get this thing clamped, that's what I want. I would like to be able to squeeze even more glue out. I'm looking across it to make sure I didn't warp it. It looks perfectly flat. We just gotta clean it up now. All right, we'll get one more clean towel now, and we'll go in there and wash it one more time. And then we'll just take the dry side of the towel and dry it off. We should be good to go. I think we'll let that set till tomorrow. I think our work is done for today. Well, it's been very close to 24 hours since I set this bridge in place and glued it up so we should be able to take this, this to the next step now but before I even do that I'm going to test it some more for uh, loose braces sometimes it's hard to hear all the loose braces when you got three of them loose already maybe the other ones weren't rattling enough to notice them so we'll check it again I think that bridge is on there to stay. I don't think that'll ever come off again. Now we're going to tap on it some more. Of course, I've still got those uh, sticks in here to pry it up, so let me get those out. I didn't hear any rattling, but you never know. It could change after you get these out. Got one more way back there. That's a hard one to get to. Oh, I can't even get to it. Wow, yeah, I can just barely reach it. How I ever got that one stood up, I don't know. Whoops, there's something loose in there. Yeah, I forgot I've got the uh, bridge pad stuck up in there. And... Yeah, that was stuck up in there, so let me get the... There's something loose in there, too. Let me find that. 
Oh, I know what this is. I was looking for this. I noticed this yesterday. This piece of binding is off the end here and it came off, so we'll put that back on too. I'll get to that in a little bit. I can still hear stuff rattling around, so I'm gonna shake it out of there. I think my might be okay. Still something loose down there. Probably that far back one. It's probably the second one because that's where I hear the noise. It was really hard to get glue in there. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm just gonna pour some CA glue in there and let that penetrate. And I'm pretty sure this will take care of the problem. I'm gonna drop this, strategically drop the drops right where they need to be. And I'm gonna get in there and dry up any little bit of a spillage that I had, not much. That looks real good, actually. I'll uh, see if I can sp spritz it down in there. See if that did it. That might have done it. I think I hear something on the base side now, right here. Yep. I think I see it too. I think I'm just going to do the CA glue thing because that seems to work just as well. And there's not much of a crack there. Again, wipe the extra off. I'm gonna put my hand in there and push that one down. I don't think I'm gonna get any glue on me. I don't think. Well, I'm gonna to try to uh, spritz this. Put, hold my hand down on that just for a few seconds while that's setting up. Let's see it now. We got it. Let me listen to the top. So there were four places where the braces were loose. Two of them we fixed with the tight bond. Fixed those last two then with CA glue and I believe we're good. Okay, I think we're good. We'll move on to the next step. There's a little bit of glue in these holes. So rather than use a drill, I think I'll just use this reamer and that cleans them up just fine too. And just for safekeeping, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the vacuum and clean that out real good. Wouldn't you know, there's no end pin in this. I didn't even think to look at that. Well, ain't that special. I think I'll put an end pin in this because Anybody that's going to want it is probably going to want a strap on it. And I think I'll go ahead and put a strap button here too for the auction. I think people would want the strap on it. Regardless, I need a, a in button down here so I can hang my uh, intonation rig. Well, the way I measure this, we got about 124 millimeters. So about 62 millimeters would be center. And... I just made a tiny, tiny mark there, and it just so happens it looks pretty centered the sideways also. So I'll just go ahead and take this and make it a nice little indent. That'll give the drill bit something to drill into. It's always good to put a little mark there, that the way the drill bit can follow it better. Well, the way that you check to make sure that you're getting the perfect size uh, drill bit is you lay your 
screw behind your drill bit and you look through your drill bit and you should be able to see threads on both sides. And this works out to be a 564 drill bit in this case. I could, the next bigger drill, I could barely, barely see the threads, which would have probably been okay, but I prefer to go a little bit smaller, so I went with this one. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it for center and drilling straight down the neck and just kind of eyeballing it. That's about all you can do on something like this. That should be fine. I've got beeswax and paraffin, and actually for driving screws, I actually prefer the paraffin. The beeswax works fine, but I think the, bee, uh, the paraffin actually seems to work a little bit better, a little, little slicker. Now, as I start this, if it seems like it's gonna be driving a little hard, I may go to the next bigger bit. It's really solid. It's not going to go anywhere. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, strap button in. And again, I kind of eyeball center. If you like grab a hold of this, you can see that the strap would be wrapped around there. And right there is, you know, you just kind of, that's a good balance point. You can kind of feel it. And so I just want to get it about center of that and come in from the bottom side. I don't want it on the middle here, and I certainly don't want it down here. If you put it here, you, it, your strap's gonna fall off. If you put it here, it's cradled and it wraps around the guitar neck and it works just perfect. So again, I'm just doing it by mainly experience. I'm gonna lay the button on here though so that I know the button's gonna lay flat. You know, I, I try not to get too close to the guitar body because then the strap might not fit in there very well. And that looks pretty good to me. I think that'll be fine. Again, I'll put a little wax on the threads. I only want to go snug. I don't want to try to make some kind of real tight, tight, tight. I just want to, you know, when it's when it gets real good and snug, that's when you want to stop. You don't want to keep going. It'll be good for a strap now. I think I'm ready to think about the intonation. So if I've got the courage to do that right now, I guess I'll get started. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a morning person and it's afternoon now and I might just wait till in the morning to do this. I'm, I feel like I do better work in the morning. So in terms of the intonation, I think I'll just wait, but I will. Go ahead and glue this piece of uh, binding back onto the end of the neck or on the end of the fretboard. And I'll use my wonderful canopy glue. Stuff is really nice. What I like about canopy glue is that it's forgiving. If you make a mistake, it's just water-based glue. You can wash it off. It doesn't ruin finishes. On the hill, that vine-covered church above the valley where the congregation gathered to pray. And it just seems to hold really well. It's really good glue. It's probably all I need to do. It's kind of got its own suction going on there. It seems to be in perfect position. I don't think I really need to clamp it or anything. I think it'll just be fine the way it is. And so therefore, I think I'll just let this set until tomorrow. Well, my friends, it's uh, early the next morning. Well, it's not that early, it's about nine o'clock. I have my intonation rig set up, and you can see all it is is just a coat hanger wire with some hooks on the ends. I put a little metal here to keep it separated because it likes to uh, go together, and looks like my solder joint broke. I can see that there too. And then I just find a used saddle uh, and set it on here, and I try to get the action approximately where it needs to be at the 12th fret, and I've got it pretty close. It's about 80, about 90. It's just in the ballpark. You know, give or take a few thousands is not gonna make any difference. Now I can tune the guitar, and what you wanna do is you wanna tune it up to the proper note, so I'll get my tuner out here. Okay, that's right on the note, and I'll note it. It's right on the money, it looks like. Little bit sharp, so that means this is too short, so I'll slide that back. Pretty close, let me try this one. Pretty close.
close. Darn close. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the front edge of this saddle because the front edge is what matters. You just don't want to go, you know, you don't want to get in front of that. You want to stay behind that. And as long as you do that, you'll be fine. Looking for my real fine mechanical pencil here. It's got the real fine lead in it. And I'll get out my close up specs so I make sure I do it really well. All I do is just draw a line under the E string here and under the E string here. That's good enough. That's all you need. Because you don't know if this saddle's straight or not, but you just need two straight lines that you can reference. As long as you're marking it on the front side, it doesn't matter how thick the, the next saddle is. You can put a thicker saddle or, or a narrower saddle the last place it touches the saddle is this front edge that's why that's the critical point that's about as perfect as of intonation as you'll ever get I think so now we can tear the rig down just take this loose saddle off okay I guess the very next step is to draw the line all the way across so I've got a good straight edge here I really take time and make sure I'm on top of my pencil marks I don't like for my bridges to extend down the channel, so I'm going to find a stopping point here, and I don't even, I'm just going to make it arbitrary. I'm going to make it the thickness of this piece of wood. So I can put it on there, and just draw a stopping point there, and I'll put it on here, and draw a stopping point. Then I'm going to look at those two stopping points and look, see if they look fairly symmetrical. And they do, they look good enough. I'm just making sure they're good and bright where I can see them when I start the routing. So I'm going to stop at those two points there. Now I got to get my rig set up for the routing. Okay, I need a clamp with fairly long reach in because the, uh, the bout on the bottom of this is wider than my little rig. I need to be able to reach in to clamp the rig down. Got to get the clamp adjusted properly and I'm putting leather pads on this down below. And we don't clamp this real tight, you understand. You don't want to do that, you'll break something. You just want it snug where it's not going to move on you. You should be able to feel it, that it feels snug enough. I'll take this, prop up the neck, so that it's sitting fairly level. Oftentimes I put that under the peg head to get this fretboard and the top fairly level. It doesn't have to be level, it's just that it makes it more secure when you're trying to do the routing. It's just better to have it good and flat. One of the things I do is I just kind of eyeball down through the hole and see that the line is staying in about the same relative place in this hole. That's not real critical. I just do it to get me in the ballpark so that when I get the bit on the router and everything, it's already pretty close. Then I can make the fine adjustments here and move this in or out. And you want to make sure that your bit stays on the back side of that line. or It should absolutely rub the line. And you very accurately rub the line to do your best job. This is the highest pucker factor there is when it's working on instruments in my opinion. Now the factories don't do it this way for good reason. For one thing it just takes way too long. For another thing it's high potential for damage and high potential for you know just tearing things up. Uh, that's why this is a huge pucker factor. You want to get your head right. You want to make sure you're comfortable. You know you want to you know everything has to be right. You don't get in any hurry when you do this because I guarantee you this is where you'll screw up and you ruin everything and you have to start over and it's a major start over. Okay the other couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this is you want to make sure your router bit is absolutely tight in this. Uh, I have screwed up a time or two in my career and I've you know not got the bit tight enough and then the bits gotten loose and wobbly and that makes a mess or it'll not cut depth that you think you're cutting and you have to just do it again and that's not so bad but you have to do it again and that just a uh, chance for more screw up if you will. I get my safety uh, close ups on. I'm going to start looking at this and I'm I'm in front of my line. I mean I'm that side of my line and I need to be behind the line so I need to move this back. I have a 90 thousandths cutting bit. I mean, I'm sorry, 98 thousandths cutting bit. And 98 thousandths is just about right. That'll cut every bit of 100 thousandths. And I like about 100 thousandths slot. I think that's really good. 
you can't check this too many times. Honestly, this you cannot check this too many times. You want to check it maybe 10 times and make sure you turn your bit the right way so that the cutter, the very leading edge of the cutter is right on the line so that you can be sure you're cutting on the line. You really can't be too careful here. You've done all this work and you don't want to screw it up. So take a lot of time on this, on this setup. Still doesn't look quite right. Very difficult to get it exactly right. And the other thing you might have to do is um, actually drop the bit down to where it's just skimming the surface of the wood. And I've got it there and I'm still a little bit off. I'm okay over here, but on this end, for some reason, I'm still a little forward. I need to go back some more. It's really not wanting to move on this side for some reason today. Build with their hands from the forest. Now stands as a marker for the grave. I mean, it's honestly, it's the hardest thing is getting this perfect. It just seems to move not far enough or too far. You can't hardly get it just where you want it. That looks like that's cutting the back of the line all the way. All right, so I'm going to tighten these down, double check my clamps that they're good and snug. Don't, you don't get a second chance on this. Now I'm going to set the depth. And the way I set the depth is I do have a depth gauge built into this. I have it removed at the moment. I am pretty much right on the top as we speak. I mean, it's like kissing it. It's not touching the wood, but it's so close that it can't matter much. And then I'll take, oh, I don't know, a couple of picks or something for thickness. Anything in a pinch. And uh, let me just measure the thickness of like these two picks. Yeah, this is 92 thousandths. This will be plenty deep. So I'll set these picks here on this flat area, drop this down, and now I know between the base and this little stop, we've got, you know, about 90 thousandths or a little more. Now I've got this tightened down. So now I take the picks out. I say I take the picks out like that. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but there's a gap between this post and the base. I can do it one of two ways. I can do it in place like this and, and slide the whole thing down, um, which is probably just as good, probably the safest way. If there's, no, if there's no extra play in everything, this is probably the best way to do it. Let me turn it on and see how, what speed we have. Okay, that's really hard to do, but I was very successful. And I, you have to blow to keep the dirt cleaned out a lot. All right, now we're touching this metal thing. So now I'll put those picks in again, and we'll go double that depth. Again, you're not out of the danger zone till you're done. I mean, anything can cause a problem. Okay, got lucky twice. I don't know how deep that is. It should be getting close to 200 thousandths. I'd like it a little deeper than that. Yeah, 175 thousandths, that's about where it is. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go one more. I hate to do it, but I think I need to. <clears throat> okay, I've got her set for one more try. Uh, it's just nerve wracking, but I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Even turning it on and off, you got to be super careful that you don't tilt it. It's just tough. It really tough to do. And we did it, and it worked perfectly. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. As I said, it can go opposite in a hurry. Very quickly, it can go south. Ask me how I know. Okay, I'm real happy with that. I'm sure that's deep enough, so we're going to take this rig off of there. Okay, I was hoping for a depth of around, you know, 250,000, somewhere, and it doesn't have to be exact. You know, that would be a good depth. 264,000, that's just about as perfect as it needs to be. 
I got the slot cleaned out, so now we're gonna need to make a saddle, and it'll have to be a custom-made saddle. I'm sure I don't have anything pre-made that's gonna work for that. Thought I might get lucky. I had a piece here, and I thought if that's bone or antler, it'll be fine, but it's plastic. I figured it was. It kind of looked plastic, but you, the way to test it is just heat up a little piece of metal and touch it, and if it melts, well, it's plastic, obviously. Here's a piece of antler. Oh, boy, it's the right width already. I don't know if it'll be the right height. It's, it's exactly the right thickness. It's probably because I made it with the same... Look, I mean, it's like perfect. I can almost pick up the instrument with it. It's that tight. Probably can pick up the instrument with it if I had it in there all the way. Well, anyway, that looks like that's perfect. So I'm going to cut this off. Might not be tall enough, but if it is tall enough, we're good to go. So I'm just going to see if I can save some time here. I'll cut off the short end so that we have the height left. Well, you can't get one much closer than that without going. It's it's so close. I'm wondering if there's just a, not a little dirt right there. A little there's some little fuzzies in there. Thinking we got to be pretty close. So let's see if it'll go in there this time. Wow, it may be too too close. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's going. Um, I don't think it's going all the way down though. I'm afraid to push it in there any harder. I think I'd have a tough time getting it out because it's... So let me just put a pencil line on here and see where it's at and see if we can pull it out of there now because it's tight. Yeah, it's tight. Wow. These plastic pliers, they don't grip it very good. Not going to grip it good enough to get it out of there. Let's see if we can lift it this way. Well, it's uniform. It's, it's really straight across there, so it might be the right depth. Let's check it. No, we're not near down far enough. So we're probably down at one of the shelves. In fact, I can see a shelf in there. When you cut multiple passes, you're going to have shelves, uh, and they're only a thousandth of an inch, but you'll always have them. Let me sharpen up this little X-Acto knife and see if we can get in there and scrape out the shelf. This is yet another reason why the factories don't do this. It's also the reason they don't get perfect intonation either. That vine covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray This blade probably needs to be replaced. I think I need one that's got the full point on it to reach all the way down in there. Yeah, it went further. That might be far enough, but let me let me double check it. And now can we get it out of there? Boy, this might be tough. Yeah, that's quite a bit deeper and it is still parallel, so it looks good. Boy, that doesn't look deep enough yet. Well, 262 is what I got right there, so let me I don't think this piece is going to be tall enough after all. I don't think it is. Found the new X-Acto blade that will reach down in there better. It's got the really sharp point. Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the graves It still stands as a marker for the graves I have a feeling this saddle is not going to work. I'm pretty sure it's going to get swallowed up if it's if it fits in there. It goes all the way down. I might even have trouble getting it out. I have a feeling that's all the way to depth this time. But it's pretty darn low. I'm hoping I can get it out. We're at depth at least. I think it's still a little tight down in there, so I'm going to just rake it a little bit more, just for safety's sake. Well, let's just, uh, for grins, put it back in there. I don't think we're going to be able to use it, but it'll be good for measuring. Yeah, we're all the way down for sure. Let's put the two strings back on it. I'm gonna bevel the tips of these pegs. 
I know most people don't bevel the, bevel the ends of these pegs, but I just find a significant difference on putting the strings on when I do. It just, and they, the little ball won't set on the end of the peg accidentally. I don't think this is going to be anywhere near high enough, but you don't know what you don't know till you don't know it, so yeah, these are going to be way too low, but at least I can get an idea how much I need to raise it up. Well, it's just too low. I'm going to say it's 45 thousandths on the big E. I'm going to say it's 40 thousandths on the little E. So both of those need to go up about double, 45 and 40. They need to double both of them exactly, really. One last thing I always do before I put the new saddle down in the slot is I file the corners off of the bottom because the corners will catch on those little shelves and things. So I just file the corners off. That'll let it go to the bottom. Doesn't take much, just enough to round it over. And I'm going to put my hand under there and then, you know, tap and lift it up and tap it. Make sure it's seated all the way. So I'm just hoping it's going to be pretty close. I think it, it'll probably be fine because I try to do it as accurate as I can and usually it works out, but it doesn't always work out. So you just never know. Okay, that's pretty close. Honestly, it's not any too high. It's, if anything, it's a little low. It's about 75. Doggone it, I was hoping for a little better than that. About 75 and 60. I've set them up that low. We'll just go ahead and string it up the rest of the way and see how it goes. Also, they can pull a little bit and maybe get a little higher as you get all the rest of the tension on there. So I don't think it'll be a problem, but it might be too low. Doggone it anyway. I was hoping for it to be higher than that. Well, it's strung up to pitch. Let's just see where we landed here. Uh, hopefully it's just a hair higher. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're almost perfect. It's almost at 90. It's about 87. That's just like perfect. And this side might be a little lower, but we'll see. Oh, it's good too. It's almost 80. It's like 77, somewhere in there. So we're really close to our mark. I mean, like so close, just within a few thousands. And a few thousands won't make any difference. It, it, seems to play really good. Let me look at the action up at this end before we make any rash decisions to play it or anything. I have a feeling it's a little bit high at this end and we would like to get it just right. Boy, it's close. It's very, 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 very close to where I set them. I'm not even gonna bother with it because it's so close it's not even worth worrying with. Let me tune it up one more time and then we'll play it for you. Well, I said I was gonna play it, but let's just show you the intonation first, cause it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. It's pretty darn close. It's as close as you'll ever find one, probably. There's your E. That's real close. It's just maybe a cent or two sharp. close. Just a hair, they're all just a, just a fuzz sharp. Really close. That one's a little bit more. This is your B and which is often compensated. We could compensate that one if we need to. I 
think I'll just go ahead and compensate the B just a little bit, just because they are often compensated. It was a little bit more sharp than the rest of the strings. I've seen lots worse. We'll, we'll compensate it anyway, just to make it as close to perfect as we can. And in order to do that, I'll just take a file here and file the front edge backwards. Let's just test it and see where we're at there. That probably at least cut it in half of where it was, which it wasn't that far off anyway. Let's check the intonation on the B again. Almost perfect. That's right on the money. So that's pretty good. We didn't have to compensate it much. It was pretty close. That's also better than your, what you call your standard compensation. They just cut those, you know, like pre-made bridges back a certain amount. And that may work for some guitars, might not work for the others. And this one here, I didn't cut it back very much at all, and it's almost perfect. That's about as good as it gets. Let's play it for you. Well, my friends, I think we have had a great success here. I only wish this could have looked a little bit better. Uh, it is what it is. Now, I also have this purple heart uh, bridge on here, which I'm going to put some oil on this. That'll darken it up. It won't be perfectly black to that. Now, if somebody wants me to, I could dye it black. Personally, I like the natural color of the wood. It may not match this perfectly, but I don't think that's a big deal. Of course, I'm colorblind, so maybe that is a big deal. got a beautiful sound. I didn't note that very well. give you much of a look at the back. It's a beautiful rosewood guitar. There is a little bit of uh, discoloration right there. Uh, I'm not sure what that's from. It, uh, it appears to be from some kind of a rub or something. Um, I don't think oil is going to get rid of that. Uh, let me it looks like it's actually in the finish, I'll be honest. It does look like there's a little problem right there. But other than that, and this little tiny itsy bitsy nick right here, a little bit, of, you know, there's just little bitty things. that It's used guitar, but it's not badly used. It's not, it's, you know, it's not been abused or anything. The uh, pick guard is clear on here. Um, the fretboard, you can see the inlay, it's beautiful. And... This is a J10, and I think the inlay is called Fleur de Lis on this one. I think that's what it's called. Um, I am pretty sure it's at least a $4,300 guitar retail. Could be more than that. Uh, you're welcome to look that all up yourself on Larravee's site um, and you know entertain yourself with whatever you think it is. It's got the abalone shell inlay all around here, around here. I think I'm going to start the auction very reasonable. Since this guitar was given to me, I've got really nothing in it except quite a bit of time. <laughs> but uh, it, you know, I'm donating my time for the cause. 
And uh, I'm going to start the bidding out pretty low on this guitar, probably around $500, and let it go see where it lands. I want to be perfectly clear to everybody there, you know, that you can see the, the crack there. There's no doubt you can see it. Um, you know, you can see the little bit of the little bit of finish damage right in this area here. Uh, other than that, it's pretty good. It does. I did put the strap buttons on it, which it did not have. And uh, the tuning keys look to be, um, I don't know, I'm going to, well, maybe they say on there. Oh, they say Larravee, but I think they're made maybe by Schaller or somebody like that. I'm not really sure about that, but they look like uh, kind of your standard keys that uh, are on the higher end guitars. There's the label on the inside. I wanted to show you that the guitar does come with a very nice case also. It's a five latch case. It says Larravee on it. You can see it's a hard shell case. It's up in very good shape. There's really no physical damage to it. There's a little bit of a white smudge right there. Little bit of a smudge right there. This is in the fabric a little bit. Um, otherwise, it's almost perfect case. Look at the inside, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful case, so you can't really go wrong. It's a, together it's a beautiful package. I hope you'll enjoy it when you buy it. That's everything I know about it. It's a fine guitar. I think you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll bid on it. And remember that it's to benefit the six string heroes. Those are veterans that have uh, sustained some sort of injury, whether it be mental or physical or, you know, amputations, those kinds of things. So be sure when you're bidding on it to remember that. It's for the cause more than it is for the instrument. I'm very proud of the cause. Thank you for supporting it. Thank <laughs> you.